So today we are going to be working with interest and compound interest. Uh, so we are, I'm going to go ahead and save or show you how to do this in both math wise as well as um, uh, brain please work. Um, both math and uh, Excel. So the general formula that we are going to have for finding interest is going to be this guy right here. Your interest is going to be equal to your principal times your rate times time. So we have some basic things. So I is always going to be interest. P is your principal. That is what you start with. Rate R is rate. So this is your interest rate. And it's done as a decimal. And T is time. How many years, how many months, how many days? How long is things or are things happening? And A, one last thing, is the end amount. So how much did we end up with based off of uh, the principal times what were uh, going through. Note, these are for simple interest. So these are, someone gives you a rate and you have simple interest with only compounds a specific amount of time. <coughs> it will just compound it as once a year you get interest. So you don't get it multiple times a year. So up here are our formulas. So down here, we have some basic numbers and we're gonna do this. So they want to determine the interest. So it's going to be this formula right here. So we need to do I, which is what we're looking for. P, which is right here, is 6,800. R, did not mean to do that. Is 14.8, but it has to be as a decimal. So we had to take this des this percentage and move it to decimal places to get us 0 0.148. And our T is five years. So they want to know the interest after five years. So using that formula, we can put 6,800 times 0 0.148. Times five. 
So uh, to get my calculator, 6,800 times 0.148 times five. So we would have 5,032. So after five years, you would make $5,000.32 off of your investment. <coughs> or sorry, um, on, a, on a loan. So you would pay an extra $5,000. But this is just how much you end up paying. So, we want to find at this one, the total end amount. So not the interest, but how much we pay at the end for a loan that costs $5,100 as principal, 6.7% over three years. So we are going to use that formula because it's asking for A, P, times parentheses one plus RT. So we're looking for A. Our P, our principal, is $5,100. Our rate is 6.7 percent which we turn into we move the two decimal places one two zero point zero six seven and our t is three years so then we can take that formula and plug into it so we have that fifty one hundred dollars times one plus 0 0.067 times three. So the first thing we have to do, multiply right there. So we wanna multiply the rate times the time. 0 0.067 times three is 0 0.201. So one plus 0 0.201 times 5,100. So go ahead and combine these two up. 1.201 times 5,100. So we, we added these. And once we did that, we could remove the parentheses because there's nothing outs or in there. So once this is just one number by itself, there's no point in having it there. So then we take this uh, 1.201 times 5,100. So plus one times 5100, $6,125.10. So our amount for the loan that we're paying on the loan after three years is $6,125.25. And 10 cents. So, how we would do these in Excel? Because this is a problem that lends itself really easily to working with Excel. So, we have those two formulas that we're going to deal with. So, 
let's do interest formulas. Let me make this bigger. It's PRT. So we're going to do this. We're going to make four of these. We're going to look for interest. It's capital P principal rate and time. <clears throat> so the reason you want to look for one of each of these is mostly because it's nice to be e to do life easier. So because you're you don't know what kind of question you're gonna get if you have these set up to solve it will make your life easier. Uh, so this is the same thing. So we're gonna have principal rate and time here. And we could just set this up uh, as a simple multiplication. So our interest is gonna be equal to the cell that we're gonna put the principal in, which in this case is B4 times the rate which is B5 times the time, which is B6. <clears throat> what I tend to do for these is, this is my outcome, so I'm gonna put that in yellow. And then these are my inputs, so I'm gonna put these in like a green. So I know I have to put in my greens and this one coming out is what I have. So back at this one, I had 6,800. I had a rate of 14.8. And what I could do for this one, if I wanted to, I can over here put it as a percent. So that if I do 0.148, it calculates it, it puts it in as a percentage. <coughs> you can also change the number of zeros because this is set to be no zeros. By hitting this little left button, you add a zero to this number. And our time is five, and it calculates our amount, which is what our answer is. So this we know verifies that this is correct. So then what we can do is we're still gonna have the same thing. We have interest, rate, and time, principal, rate or interest time principal interest rate <clears throat> so what we have to do is we have to isolate the different parts of these uh the principal the rate and the time from this formula so if we do a little bit of work on the algebra it will save us time later so if we have interest equals PRT, and we want to get principal by itself, we can just divide both sides by R and T. So principal is equal to I divided by R times T. <coughs> so on this one, we want to put equals interest, which is D4, divided by, and this point we want to make sure that we do an open parenthesis because both rate and time are on the bottom. So open parenthesis, rate times time. Now, whenever we do this, because we have values that are not set or zero, we're going to get a divide by zero error, that's okay. <coughs> we can put in values to even it out. So we could do the same thing here. We could check 5,032, 0.148 and five. <coughs> it verifies our answer. Okay, so we want to do the same thing with rate. So I equals P 
PRT. So we want to divide by P and T. So we are pretty close to the same formula. Interest over principal times rate. Sorry, uh, time. So equals principal F4 divided by open parentheses <coughs> interest times time. So 0.148, and we go ahead and set this up as percentage again. And we have five. Principle is 50, 32. Great. Principle. All right. Principle interest. Wrong thing. I'm sorry. That would be 6,800. There we go. That's that percentage going zero. There we go. And then we can do the same thing with time. <coughs> so interest. Equals. PRT. Divided by PNR. And our time is equal to the interest divided by principal times the rate. On Excel, equals that H4 divided by H5 times H6. So once again, 0.148. Uh, oh, wait, I'm doing this wrong again. Yep. 0.148. And then we have principal interest. Goal 32. And our interest was 6,800. Oh, 6,800. Something's wrong. What's wrong? Time is equal to oh, 50, 32, 6800. There we go. Long numbers. Principal rate. And then I have coded Excel to basically, I can change these numbers and get the answer based off of whatever I'm doing. Using the second formula, A equals P plus one RT looks kind of hard, but you could kind of cheat around this pretty easy. Uh, I'll show you how. Uh, A equals P one plus RT. The only hard one is when you do R, the rate or the time. <coughs> but even then we can work with it. So, so A equals P one plus R T. So A and costs <coughs> principal rate time equals once again the principal times one plus 
rate times time. So our principal in this one was $5,100. Our rate was 6.7%. Let's go ahead and turn that right up here. 0 0.067. And our time was three years. And it gave us $6,125.10. And you could turn these into numbers too, if you would like. Just hit this button right here. So the next one would be the principal. And then we need to know end cost rate time. We had to know rate, so then we need to know principal and cost and time. And then we had to know time with principal and cost and rate. <coughs> so let me go ahead and do formatting really quick on here. And then rate percentage one. Dollar, dollar, and dollar. So the principal, to find that, we need to isolate the P. So we would take and divide by one plus our T. So our principal would be equal to a over one plus RT. Like that. So our principal is equal to A divided by one plus the rate times the time. So we could do the same thing. We have an end cost of 6125.1, rate of 0 0.067, and three years, we come up with the same dollar cost. <clears throat> to find the rate and time, things get kind of weird, but that's okay. So we could do, A equals P one plus RT. So we want to make sure we divide both sides by P here. So one plus RT is equal to A over P. We'll subtract one from both sides. So we'd have RT is equal to A over P minus one. So I wanna make sure this goes into a parentheses here because I need to make sure this is clear because this is gonna be used for the next two. <clears throat> so this one, I wanna find the rate. So I had to divide by the time. Divide both sides by time. And that would give me a rate is equal to A over P minus one over T equals A divided by P, or sorry, A divided by P, wrong way around. So A, <coughs> the end cost divided by P, and that's minus one. So I've gotten this top part up. Uh, so I wanna make sure I put this all in 
one set of parentheses because I'm going to go and put the other value on the bottom. And then I want to divide this all by time. So when I put in my principal, my end cost, and my time, I get the percentage I want. Now, right here, we had everything but time isolated. <clears throat> so we could do the same formula here, except we're going to divide by rate. So RT was equal to A minus, or divided by P <clears throat> minus one right here. And this time, instead of divided by time, we're going to divide by the rate. So which would give us time is equal to A divided by P minus one over T. Or sorry, R, not T, R. <coughs> Equals, open parentheses, A, which is H11, divided by P, which is principal, minus one, and then divide that by your rate. Putting in our numbers. It's 125.1.067. We come up with the same time, so we know the answer is correct. A lot of work at the front, but if you do this, then your life gets easier because then you can come in and just change things around. So then you'll get to your homework and you'll see something like this. <clears throat> so this, oh, I forgot to actually get the percentage. Well, I could just use this. So if I have this, this is, uh, okay, so I have a starting balance, I have an entrance, interest, and I have an ending balance, but I don't have the rate. <clears throat> so I could use this right here, the principal. So I starting balance, which is the principal is $4,000. The amount of interest I get is $280. And I have one reporting unit. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Seven percent interest. I know it's seven percent interest. Or in principle. Oh, I see what I'm doing. Never mind. So this one's a little bit different, and you can't use this one directly for this, but this is actually has a 7% interest. <clears throat> so what you're supposed to do is we take the $4,000 here from our starting balance, <clears throat> and you times it by 0 0.07, which is our interest, which gives us $280, which is our interest. So this goes here. Our interest goes here. This goes up here. And then this 
plus that would be equal to our ending balance. <clears throat> then I take this number here and put it here. And then I follow it over, do it over and over and over again. <clears throat> so the next year, I'd have 4,280. And I want to take that times my interest of 0 0.07, which would give me $299.60. So then I want to take this plus that would be equal to here. So $4,579.60. And then you can keep on going down here. <clears throat> you could also do this. You have your starting interest or starting amount. We have, oh, it says through year, sorry, sorry. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Yearly starting. We start with $4,000. <coughs> so, so our interest. It'd be, I'm just gonna put it right here. Format it as a percentage. And our interest, N T E R E S T. <clears throat> so I want to take my yearly starting and times it by my interest. So what I want to do in this, because I'm going to copy this down the line, let's put dollar signs around the interest. And then I want to have a year end, which is going to be my year starting plus my interest. And then this value is going to be what I ended with. <clears throat> so the good thing about this is once you have one year and once you have this tied into your interest, which isn't moving, I could take this, go down to where it turns into a small crosshair like it is. <coughs> and copy it down the road. Same thing here. <coughs> so as you go down, you should have the same amount of values. Uh, something weird happened here, by the way, because it was 4,900 and not 4,840. But that's how you can use your computer to do the math for you. <clears throat> so on to simple questions. So Rosa wants to invest $10,000 in a, saving bond, a savings account that pays 4.3% simple interest. If you can get a savings account that pays 4.3% interest, you put as much money as they will let you into it. Um, how long will it take for the investment to double in value? Okay, so this one, <clears throat> because it said that magical thing about double in value, we are going to use this formula right here because we know the end value. <clears throat> we know the initial value and we know the rate. So our initial value is that $10,000. My end value is this times two or $20,000. 
to my rate <coughs> is 4.3%. which turns into 0 0.043. So we have all this, and then we can use this formula. So A is equal to P, one plus RT. So we have 20,000. is equal to 10,000, one plus 0 0.043 <coughs> T. So first thing to do, divide both sides <coughs> by 10,000. When you, by the way, when you do something like this where it says double, it's always going to be two. And that leaves us one plus 0.0043 T. <clears throat> and then I'm going to subtract one. So one is equal to 0 0.0043 T. And then I divide, oh, sorry, there's too many zeros, 0 0.043. Let me get rid of one of these. And then I do divide by 0 0.043 on both sides. You're in the camera, by the way. Okay. Which would give you know, five or fourteen. <clears throat> so that gives us a time of twenty three point three years. To double. If we are going to do this over here. We would do our principal would be ten thousand dollars. Our end cost is twenty thousand, and our percentage is four point three, which gives us the same time. <coughs> so we know what we got out was uh, correct. Uh, so uh, Chris wants to do, uh, so this is another one. So this time we want to determine the interest rate required for Chris's investment to double in value in 14 years. So we have 5,000 as your principal. Our end would be twice that, which is 10,000 again. Uh, we want to figure out the rate. And then we have time of 14 years. So 10,000, so we use the same formula up here, is equal to 5,000 times one plus 14R. So once again, divide by 5,000, So that's two, like I said, it happens a lot, is equal to one plus 14 R. That's one, that's one. One is equal to 14 R divided by 14. Now our rate is equal to <coughs> one divided by 14. Uh, so seven, Point one percent. And if I do the same thing over here, <clears throat> we started with 
5,000. We want to go to 10,000. And we want to do it in 14 years. And we end up with 7.1%. So we have the same value, whether we use it on hand or by Excel. Then Excel is a very good way to make sure you're not making an error when you do your math too, by the way. Okay. <clears throat> Those were the easy-ish problems. These were simple interest. The simple interest, let me rename it, is where you have one period where things get compounded over. You always have the same thing happen every single time. It's always paid out at the same amount. <clears throat> when you have compound interest, things happen at a much quicker rate. So kind of the same thing. We have <clears throat> uh, interest can be calculated as your amount at the end minus your principal. That's pretty simple. This is where things can get uh, a little bit more uh, annoying. The uh, A is equal to P times one over R and N time uh, to the N teeth power. So in here, we have a couple of new things. So we still have I is interest. A is end value. P is principal. R is your rate. T is time. And the N is a new one, is number of times compounded. So common ones we're going to do is yearly. One. Biannual, V2, I'm oh, sorry, not three, two, quarterly, four, uh, and monthly. You can have different ones, but these are the common ones we're going to run into. The month would be 12. And if somebody is dumb and give, ever gives you this, where you get paid daily on interest, take it and run in a heartbeat. Because <coughs> that is 365. Let me go ahead and take this real quick. I get, got out of it. Uh, one second. I'm probably going to make that a little neater in the next one. So on this, let me make this real quick. You have year one. Uh, quarterly or monthly 12 and daily. So on this one, <clears throat> they wanted to determine the interest at the end of five years, given the fact that your principal is 3,500. Our rate is 14.8%, which would be 0 
four, eight. Uh, it's compounded monthly. So n equals 12. And there's going to go for five years. So the first thing we'd have to do, so to find interest, we'd have to do a minus p. So we have p here, but we don't have a. So we have to find a. So a is equal to p 1 plus r over n and t. <coughs> so we have everything to do everything on this side of the equation. So that's what we're going to do. So p is 3,500. And then we have 1 plus r, which is 0 0.148 over n, which is 12 times, or sorry, to the power of 12 times 5. So we have, first thing we need to do is actually do this multiplication here. So 12 times 5 is 60. So 3,500 times 1 plus 0 0.148 over 12 to the 60th. <coughs> so on this one, we have to remember So we're going to start with inside. So 0.148 divided by 12. 0.148 divided by 12 is 0 0.0123 repeating. And then you add one to that. So we have 3,500 times 1.1023 repeating. Wait, one, zero, two, three, repeating to the 60th power. And at this point, it's important to put in the 60th power next. So if you're using a standard calculator here, you have this X to the Y button. You hit that and hit 60, and that gives you 2.08647, I'll add on. So that's the number that we take. So we do 3,500 times, let's do 2.086. Uh, if you're actually calculating this, you want to actually not clear this and then we put it in, you want to go ahead and hit times and then do the 3,500 to get your correct answer. So times 3,500 would be $7,302 and uh, 65 cents. So you always remember to round up cents as you're supposed to. So that is our n value. So what we have to do at this point, is take this 7,000, so interest <coughs> is equal to A minus P. So $7,302.65 minus $3,500. $2,802.65. And this right here is why you stay away from payday loans and rent to own furniture from like some, some of the bigger stores because this is what they do. This is a not unheard of terms of a lease 
uh, you end up paying more than double what you would normally for furniture. So once again, I'm going to show you how to do this in Excel land. So interest. So we have principal and end value. And then we do rate times number of pounded. So we're going to have two things we're calculating real quick. So this is a calculated value, but so is this. So I'm going to do a different to blue. So this is no or put in. And these are put in, but the blue is calculated and used in the end. So the interest is going to be your end value minus your principal. Nice and easy. <coughs> so we are given a principal value of $3,500. So format as a number or as a dollar, dollar, dollar. Our rate is a percentage and do this. So we are given 14.8. Uh, and we're doing uh, years, time, not times. Five years and it is compounded 12 times. So we have to use this formula right here. So we're going to take. Hi. Sorry, copy of memory. So we're going to take A is equal to the principal times one plus, I'll put this in parentheses because I'm always paranoid, R over N, so the rate divided by the number of times compounded. And I'm going to go ahead and close that off to the time times compounded, and that gives us our value. <clears throat> so this one is nice and easy. Uh, the interest is equal to principal times end value. That's a nice, easy one to do. Um, and we could do the same thing uh, for if we want to know the principal as well. Uh, so if we know the interest, and, but we need to know the principal. Actually, no, that's a little harder. We can't really do that principal one. So this one is nice and easy to do. Um, uh, I hate that. Okay. Uh, so we can only do in this formula up top if we don't know. Um, a <clears throat> or I, because if we're doing, if we don't know A, we're doing the bottom one anyway. If we don't know P, we can't do the bottom. <coughs> so we can only calculate interest with this one, uh, with this. We can, however, do end value rate time and compounded with this. So we need to know principal. Oh, and principal. Because we have five values, one, two, three, four, four. Why do I have oh, five values? <coughs> we can use these all to get different rate time compounded. Right, principal time com let's do oh, I cannot spell today end value principal rate compounded 
it'll do n value prints of tall spell. I'd be amazed. Rate and time. And then we have n value of rate time compounded. So once again, we're going to have to do some algebra tree work this for some of them. Uh, principle would be the easiest one to do. <coughs> so we have A is equal to P one plus R over N to the NT. So we can just divide everything over one plus R over N to the NT. How's it doing that? On both sides, are you being annoying? One plus R over N to the NT. And gets us RP is equal to a over one plus r over n to the nt. So principle equals the n value divided by one plus. Uh, so what I will end up doing, unless you're doing, oh, actually, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, so equals n value divided by one plus uh, r over n rate divided by number to the n times t. And I am once again paranoid. So I put another set of parentheses around that to make sure that <coughs> everything works like it's supposed to. So our end value, let's do 7,302.65. Our rate is 0.148, time is five and compound is 12. So we have the same correct values. Dollar sign. Dollar principal rate that. Sorry, I'm just making sure it's formatted correctly when I get to it. Value principal, dollar sign, rate, over. So on this one, this is the calculated value. So let's not do that. Let's do this here. And these are the information that you had to put in. Color, color, and then this, this, this are all going to be yellow. So this is the easiest one to calculate. Uh, on this, to find the end value, I could just use the same formula up here because it's the same thing down there and do point point one four eight five principal thirty five hundred rather thirty five hundred point one four eight five and twelve and why am I getting a different end value value copy Copy, 
paste. It's doing something weird. I don't know why it's doing something weird. Oh, I see why. Because I have different orders here, so it's doing different things. So I want to make sure I do the same thing correctly. So I have principal times one plus the rate divided by the number. And all that is two number times times, <coughs> which it is. So that just gives us three more to find the uh, way to do it real quick. So um, let me go ahead and clear and do a new one at the very end because this will get very messy. Actually, just delete this. So, select. So now I want to isolate the R, the N, and the T. So I have so the first thing I want to do is divide both sides by P. So AP, A over P equals one plus R over N. You know what, they're probably never gonna do these because it just gets really complicated to deal with this part right here. So I'm not gonna do it either. If it comes up, I will deal with it and help you at that point. But we're also kind of dragging on, so. Uh, so we're gonna do uh, some examples and use some of the stuff I, I made. Um, so we have the same formulas. <clears throat> so they want to know the total end amount, which is A, at the end of seven years. So we have P equals 5,100. Our rate is 12.3%, which turns into 0 0.123. It's compounded by annually, so two. And we have a time of seven years. So A is equal to P and then one plus R over N to the NT. <coughs> so we would have A is equal to 5,100 times one plus 0 0.123 over two to the two times seven. So we have 5,100 times one plus, so 1.123 divided by two is 0 0.0615. And then two times seven is 14. So I just did this part and this part. <clears throat> so one plus 0 0.0615. So we have 5,100 times 1.0615 to the 14th power. Then I want to take and do this math right here. So on here, I add one, then x to the y, 14, gives us 2.306. and that's times 5,100, which would give us 2.306. Uh, 
life history is it just kind of history got everything away from me eleven thousand seven hundred and sixty one dollars and sixteen cents one seven six one dot <coughs> One six. So that would be the ending amount. Uh, going back to Excel, we have we're looking for A. So we have fifty one hundred here. We have point one two three here. We have a time of seven and an end of two. Uh, whenever if you have it ever go like all dollar or pound signs. You just have to double click it and it will expand to show everything. <clears throat> so we get the same answer here as we had here. So we know the answer is correct. Or we did the same bad math in both, one of the two. Okay. And this is one of the reasons I also show you how to do the spreadsheets because these are. Um, uh, some of the problems you would have. So if you had $2,000 at 5% interest, you would end up having 2,000, not need to do that, $2,000 times clear. Delete, delete clear. Two thousand times one point zero five, we'd have at twenty one hundred dollars. If we compounded annually, so once a year, we'd have A is equal to two thousand, our principal times one plus R over N. So we have point zero five. It's compounded once because it's annual to the one times 30. Oh, it's 30 years, sorry. I did the wrong thing here. So this one, we have to use this formula back here. RT, one plus RT. Sorry, use the wrong formula. So let me clear frame. Oh. It's one, there we go, plus 0 0.05 times 30. So we have 30 times 0 0.05 is 1 1.5 plus one, so 2,000 times 2.5 is $5,000. So if she put $2,000 in for simple interest, she'd have $5,000 after 30 years. With compounded annually, so we would have this formula right here. So $2,000 times one plus 0 0.05 over one to the one times 30. 
So we have $2,000.05 divided by one is one, or 0 0.05, so 1.05 to the 30th power. 0 0.05 to the 30th is 4.32. So 2,000 times 4.32. And then times two thousand dollars, the eight thousand six hundred forty-three dollars and eighty-nine cents. But it's asking for the nearest cent, not rounding up. Forty-three, so that would be eighty-eight cents at this point. Uh, then, as you keep on going up quarterly and monthly, you start getting a lot bigger numbers. So two thousand. So one minus 0 0.05, and we've changed the N from one to four. One, so 0 0.05 divided by four times 30 times four. So we have 2000 times one minus 0 0.05 divided by four is 0 0.0125. So it's plus, plus. 0 0.0125 to the 120th power. So that would be 2000 times one. Point zero one two five to the one twentieth. So plus one to the one hundred twentieth power. So two thousand times four point four four. Eight hundred and eighty thousand or eight thousand eight hundred dollars, eight thousand eight hundred eighty dollars and forty three cents. And for the quarterly, or sorry, for the monthly, we'd have that two thousand. So this would be N twelve times. One plus zero point zero five over twelve times thirty times twelve. So point zero five divided by twelve is point zero zero four one six repeating. So two thousand. Then I add one to that. One point zero one point. Zero one four so zero zero four one six. Put that backwards. Zero 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 four one six repeating. And then thirty times twelve is three hundred and sixty. I would normally expect you to use a calculator, but I don't want to get rid of this. We take this to the 360th power, which gives us 4.467. So 2000 times 4.467 or $8,935.49. Or we come in here, so simple interest. So if we had, uh, we're looking for A. So if we have a principal of $2,000, our rate is 0 0.05, and we have a time of 30 years, we can see our end cost, which is our amount right there, 
at five thousand dollars. <coughs> Go over over to the compound interest because we are looking for uh, and values. We still have the same principle. We have the same rate. We have the same time, but then we can change our compounded. So this one. Annually, $8,643.88, $8,643.88. I change it to quarterly, so this number to a four, $8,880.43, which is what we got. And then you change it to a 12, $8,935.49, which is what we got there. <clears throat> so that's one of the big reasons you use Excel is because when you get something like this and it asks for like four numbers really quick, as long as you know what you're changing, so this part right here, you it makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so how much would you need to deposit into an account right now in order to have $4,000 in 15 years? Assume it earns 4% interest compounded monthly. So this one, we have, we're looking at A, uh, 4,000. We don't know the principal. We do know the time is 15. We do know the interest at 4%, so R. 0 0.04 and we do the know that the they're compounded monthly so our number since monthly there are 12 months in the year <coughs> would be that so we have a is equal to p one plus r over n to the n t so we had to divide both sides by P because we don't know the principle. We want to get that by itself. So A over P is equal to, actually, no, why am, why am I doing that? That makes life be harder. I want to divide both sides by one plus R over N to the N T. One plus R over N to the N T, which gives us that principle is equal to our ending divided by one plus our rate over number of payments to the number of payments times time. <clears throat> so once again, you can put that $4,000 in. And then I would have one plus our rate, which is 0 0.04 over 12, and take that to the 12 times 15. <clears throat> so I know, so we top of state's the same, so $4,000. One plus 0 0.04 divided by 12. 0 0.003 repeating. Zero zero three, correct, correct. And then twelve times fifteen. So plus one. And if you don't know this and you have a calculator, what you can do is do open parentheses twelve times fifteen, and it will actually tell you the number, which is to the hundred eightieth power. which gives us 1.8203. So 4,000 <coughs> divided by 1.8203. So plus, so 4,000 divided by that, 1.82 would equal 
$197.44. Uh, coming back over here, we have an end value of $4,000, a rate of 0 0.04, time of 15, and it is compounded monthly. $2,197.44. So we've confirmed it. Uh, so this is the same thing we did before uh, with this guy, except this time we're doing it monthly. So let me go ahead and copy this because this will make life easier. So this one we're looking at, let me clear everything out. What's interest? So our interest is <coughs> uh, calculated at 12% compounded monthly. So 1% each month. So we have an interest of 0.01. This is month, and we're doing five months. So they're just having you uh, take each value, times it by 1%, and calculate the ending. So it's the same thing we've done before the month end is the month start from the previous month. <coughs> Copy this down. Our interest is going to be the month start times the interest, which is going to be, I'm going to put the dollar signs in front of the P and the one again. So it'll calculate at $49, which is what they have right here, and then our month's end should be the month start plus the interest. I'll click on this, and then I should be able to copy this down and the rest of it should go. So I end up with the same number here as they do here, and the same number here as they do here. So it's correct. Uh, the other way around it is you could just take this starting balance. So this is start times 0 0.01. And then this is start plus interest. And then this would go here and then you keep on going like that. And this guy. So I'm going to show you this one real quick. They actually have a calculator for you. <clears throat> it's called a TVM calculator and time value calculator. It's this guy right here. Uh, where did the... So on here, you could take certain information here. So I have $14,000 in the account. So when you are putting money into a bank, you should put it in as a negative amount. I know it doesn't make sense. <clears throat> That's just how it is. Uh, then it's asking for the number of payments. You're not paying money into it. You're not making a monthly payment or anything like that. If you're calculating that, you would put that in here. Uh, I am not, I'm looking for specifically on this question, if you look at it, how many months are the payment investment accruing interest? I want to, if I'm looking for that N, get rid of N. It needs to be empty. Uh, it says right here to put an X into here. Yes, for here, you put it in an X. On the calculator, <coughs> you don't put in an X. Uh, so we have a rate and it's asking for it as a percentage. So you need to put it in as 9.2 not 0 
and I'm going to end up with 35007.02. Uh, so it's asking how many payments per year <coughs> and compounding periods per year. So it's asking for uh, the interest was compounded monthly. So payments per year and compounding periods per year are 12, both. And then I would click on this end solve. <coughs> and it gives, it fills in the missing number, which is what you get down here. Okay. Do not put this in as X, because if you put this in as X, <coughs> you're going to get not a valid entry. Okay. And this is kind of what the thing that I did in Excel does. So, uh, the last one is total return. We've already done it, but I'm going to do one more real quick. <coughs> so it's our in the ending value minus our initial value over our initial. So Anna pays sixteen thousand five hundred dollars. I can draw, if I can write, it'd be helpful. So that's the initial value, that's what she paid. She shares eight years later, uh, so ending at $11,000, what was her total return? <coughs> so our ending value was 11,000. Her initial value was 16,500. And her initial value again on the bottom was 16,500. So 11,000 minus 16,500. So we have negative $5,500. So she lost $5,500. And then you divide that by 16,500, ends up with negative 33, 0.33 repeating. So that's 0 0.33 repeating. So you times that by 100, and she lost negative 33.3%. In an Excel sheet, since this is very simple, we'll do it over here. So if you have, uh, we're doing total return, initial, final. So if we had an initial value of 16.5 and sold for 11,000, <coughs> so our initial, or sorry, our final, 013 minus our initial divided by our initial. And then I could just hit this as a percentage and push out for one percentage point. So these two are inputs. And this is our answer. Uh, we could also uh, calculate the final give it initial and return think yes so if we have actually we're not going to worry about that because i don't think it comes up in homework and it gets more confusing so let me go ahead and stop sharing